Bruchem Aboim. Again, welcome everyone to our home, and uh, thank you for attending. So, this week on my thoughts, I would like to examine a spiritual level that one can choose to observe. Uh, it can be kept for a period as little as 30 days, or as long, actually, as one's lifetime. Now, if someone chooses to become a Nazir, they then accept upon themselves three restrictions. They are forbidden to cut their hair. They are forbidden to have any contact with the dead, even to attend to the funerals of their closest relatives. And they are forbidden from partaking of wine or any product that contains grapes or any grape byproduct. Now, the first question that comes to mind is, why, why would someone want to be a Nusser? Rashi in the fourth book of the Torah in the portion of Nusso asked that exact question. We read in the portion of Nazir that is preceded by the portion dealing with the Sota, uh, a woman who was accused by her husband of infidelity. Rashi poses the question, why is the section of the Nazarite next to the section of the woman who is suspected of infidelity? So he answers to inform us that whoever sees a faithless wife in her state of degradation shall separate themselves from wine, which brings one to adultery. Again, based on the Talmud of Sota. Mamloy states that the portion of Nazir follows immediately after the portion of Sota to teach us that if a person wants to escape sin and the disgrace and humiliation that accompany it, as we witness with the Sota, then they should take a vow to abstain from wine. Since it has been well documented that addiction to wine brings about many, many evils. By an individual accepting a period of Naziris upon themselves, what they do is promote inner feelings of spirituality, feelings which will hopefully assist them in their quest to overcome the passions and desires of this world. The Ger Rebbe, Rav Ram Mordechai Miger, asked, why is it that the Torah mentions the Sota first and then the Nazir, whereas in the order of the Talmud, the tractate of Nazir precedes the tractate of Sota. He explains that the Torah's order as, is really correct. It is based on a verse in Psalms 34.14, which states, Sur meira ve'ase to, turn away from evil and do good. Meaning that one who sees a Sota, which is ra, evil, should then become a Nazir, which is connected with tov, good. However, the rabbis realized that as the spirituality of the generations have declined, that they could no longer wait for the people to remove their evil character traits before they could attain good. They feared that the good would never materialize, and that being the case. So they decided that on a very practical level that they should place the Nazir before the Sota, the whole being, so that one should be occupied with good even before they experience the evil, so that they will then have mustered enough strength and determination to overcome their negative impulses. The Nazir who has separated themselves from wine has demonstrated their intention to remain in this hidden domain, a place in which Adam, first man, was at home, before he sinned with the tree of knowledge. In other words, they desire to protect themselves against the temptation of greed, which many times causes a person to lose their garments of life. Since the origin of man's fruit, his deeds, are anchored in the domain referred to as gefen, wine, the Nazar declares himself as abstaining from that source of temptation to the best of their ability. Now, since it is highly improbable for any individual to remain on such an elevated spiritual level indefinitely, they therefore declare, declare a specific period of time that their vow will be in force. Now the Nazar is commanded to let their hair grow. Then only at the conclusion of their term of vow must they then shave all of it off. There can be little doubt that excessive hair or a total baldness, both can deprive a person 
of the typical appearance of a human being. Such a condition helps to minimize normal human appetites, such as greed and or lust. Now the word Nazar has within it the Hebrew word zer, a crown. Since the Nazar has entered into the domain of Adam Arisham, first man, prior to his sin. That was before Adam became a Zor, a stranger. This elevated status, however, is temporary, since it is maintained only during the period of their vow. After they fulfill their vow, they then revert back to being an ordinary mortal, uh, just like the rest of us. Their special crown is now removed from them. Now, based on this fact, they, they therefore have to offer certain sacrifices to the temple to atone for reverting back to a lower level of sanctity, the level which Adnurisham, first man, sunk to after he ate from the fruit of the tree, which is one of the reasons that the Nazar brings a sin offering at the end of his term of Zeus. So, again, but why is the Nazar considered so holy? It states it in verse 6, pardon me, chapter 6, verse 8, that all of the days of the Nazirus, they are holy to God. You know, we all talk about and think about tshuva, repentance. The Nazir is an individual who has connected their thoughts and their speech into an action, one that they must, must adhere to for a minimum of 30 days. We are told by our sages that number 30 constitutes what we call a chazaka, a permanence, much like the law of placing a mezuzah on a new residence. The obligation to put it up it begins only after one has been there for 30 days. The Torah equates another with a prophet, as it states in Amos 2.11, I have established some of your sons as prophets and some of your young men as Nazarites. In addition, we witness that the portion of the, in the Torah that follows the Nazar is Birchat HaKohanim, the priestly blessings. The Ibn Ezra says that this alludes to the fact that the Nazar is holy, much like the Kohanim, the priest, are holy. The al states that the Torah wants to teach us that a person should always try to grow and to reach for the highest levels of Kedusha, sanctity possible, through their free choice. The Barbanel states that the Nazar teaches us an important lesson in life, that sanctity does not have to be limited to an inherited spirituality, much like a Kohen. It is something that one that can be attained by anyone. The Balaturim states that we find the term Nazar mentioned 30 times in this chapter. This may be seen as an allusion to the fact that if a person accepts upon themselves to become a Nazar without stating any specific time period, then they be our a Nazar for a minimum, which is 30 days. The Kliyakar states that there is a reason as to why the minimum time that one can serve as a Nazar is 30 days. It is our hope that these 30 days will condition the individual to create a continuing state of spirituality for the future, just as we see with the law of saying, one who causes the wind to blow and the rain to fall. An insert that we recite in the second blessing of the Amidah, the standing prayer during the winter months. If there is a doubt in your mind as to whether you've said the correct insert or not, the halacha, the law is that if you have said the blessing less than 30 days, then you must repeat the Amida. However, once you have recited this prayer properly for 30 days, if there is a doubt as to whether you recited the correct insert or not, then you do not have to repeat the Amida. The logic being that once something has been ingrained into your subconscious, habitual, you have most probably, probably recited the prayer correctly. The Shemi Shmuel states that the Nazar is bound by three special regulations. Again, as I mentioned, he may not drink wine or strong drink. He may not cut his hair, nor may he file himself to the dead. Now, these are three arenas, pardon me, areas in which all human life exists. They are thought, 
speech, and action. This corresponds to the three restrictions that are placed upon the Nazir during his term of Naziris. The Nazir may not cut his hair, since the head is the seat of the brain and the intellect of a person. The hair which covers the cranium and thus encompasses the brain is at least symbolically an outgrowth and development of that which lies within thought. Abstention from wine leads one to a greater control over the power of speech, as our rabbis tell us in the Tractate of Erevin 65a, Nichnas Yayin Yotzach Sod. When wine enters, then secrets come out. The Nazir develops an ability to control their speech by abstaining from wine and related substances for the period of their vow of abstention. Again, a good start for the future. And then death, which represents the failure and demise of this physical world. Avoiding contact with it sanctifies the physical active components of man related to action. When the period of time of their vow concludes, the Nazir follows the procedures by which they may re-enter society and ignore their special restrictions. The sacrifices that they must offer serve to ensure that their period of self-restraint was not wasted. Rather, its message has hopefully left a permanent impression on their personalities. Rabbeinu Bukhai states that these prohibitions constitute three separate sins. He deduces this fact from the two words found in chapter 6, verses 4, 5, and 6. Call you may, the words that mean all the days of. These two words are written before each of these three prohibitions mentioned in the Torah. Once again, they are do not drink wine, since wine derives its power from those emanations that are located on the left side of the spherot. It is the left side represents spiritual negative influences. Hair represents strength, as we see with Shimshon, Samson. When his hair was cut off, it made him weak, not only physically, but spiritually as well. Hair rep uh, represents the acts of God which are involved with the most minute details. It is also a sign of the continuous growth of this world in all four directions. And so to the Nazar is commanded to allow their hair to grow in all directions. However, after their period of Naziris has ended, the Torah commands them to cut off all of their hair. That hair is then burnt in the temple under their shlomim, under their peace offering, so that it has now attained a state of holiness. Now, I find it interesting that the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, would receive a special haircut weekly. Nowhere, nowhere do we find a requirement that the hair that was cut off, off of his head should be burnt on the altar, as was the command with the Nazir. So, in a sense, the Nazir has become even holier than the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. In addition, they both share the same unique restriction. Neither of them are permitted to defile themselves to the dead, not even to the seven closest relatives, such as a mother or a father. A requirement that even a regular Kohen would be obligated to observe. Now, the Nazar is required to bring three offerings at the end of their term of Nasiris. The first is an Ola, a burnt offering, which is always brought for inappropriate thoughts, which corresponds to the intellect of the Nazar. The second offering is a Chattas, a sin offering, which is brought for an inadvertent transgression, a shogate, which corresponds to action. And the third offering is a shlomim, a peace offering, an allusion to peace, since we see that the Mizbeach, the altar, the Kohen, the priest, and the Nazar, the owner, all receive a portion of this sacrifice. The shlomim offering represents a fusion of two forces that usually would oppose one another, the owner and the altar. This is similar to speech, which is produced through the powers of both the intellect and the body. Thus, the shlomim corresponds to the speech of the Nazir. So we witness that the system of the offerings provided by the Torah were meant to invoke a visual and spiritual reminder of the great heights 
which the Nazar had reached during their period of abstention. This will, hopefully, leave an everlasting impression upon the ex nazir for all time as to what they were able to attain during their period of Nazirus and what, with the appropriate resolve, they can hopefully remain. We read at the end of the portion of Nasso concerning the Nazar that even after the Nazar has fulfilled all the commandments concerning their purification process, somehow they are still referred to as a Nazar. But why? The Yasnaim Torah states that they are still referred to as a Nazar so that they should always remember why they became a Nazar in the first place. It is said in the hope that they don't return to their previous lifestyle of wine and excessive behavior. Now, the Meshachachma questions as to why the Nazar brings a sin offering. After all, what sin did they commit? Our sages tell us that by accepting a period of Naziris upon themselves, there are certain mitzvot that they can't observe. They can't make Kiddush or Havdalah properly since both are preferably performed with wine. They cannot fulfill the mitzvah of honoring the dead, even for the closest of relatives, again, as I mentioned, such as a father or mother, since they are forbidden to come into any contact with the dead. And according to the Ramban, the Nazar has reached such an elevated spiritual plateau that it would have been proper for them to remain there on that spiritual level forever. However, since they have voluntarily descended from their spiritual height, they are now obligated to bring an atonement. In addition, by not partaking in wine, it would have limited their desire and ability to share in all types of communal festivities. It would have led them to avoid celebrating with family and friends. In addition, by having no contact with the dead, it would have hampered their ability to comfort others, those who had lost a dear one. Then letting their hair grow wild would have created an even greater barrier between themselves and society since their appearance would have been perceived as strange, but different. All three of these restrictions cause a Nazar to divorce themselves in many ways from normal interactions with people. At the same time, it gives them a unique opportunity to step back and take a look at their previous lifestyle from a new and different perspective. It may help them to focus more on the internal and less on the external. The Meshachachma states that the Nazar may well have been a person who initially was too self-centered. The hope is that if they are able to become more objective in their perspective, then they may now be received as a different person, a better person. As it states in, again, chapter 3, verse 13, Yahweh Oso, he shall bring him. The question is, who shall bring him? The answer may well be that it is the Nazar who has been transformed into someone else, an elevated individual. That being the case, they are therefore bringing another, a new and better person. The Isnaim Latura expounds on these two words, that he shall bring him as a warning, that the Nazar should not be brought by their Yetzahara, by their evil inclination. Hopefully, they can once again drink wine, and not fall back into the place from where they originally came. Now the al Kishmodi states that there is no time limit mentioned in the Torah about the period of Naziris. He views this as an indication that each individual needs to appraise themselves as to the correct amount of time needed for them to rein in their challenges. In addition, observing these three restrictions may well help the Nazir to break away from, the many, from many of their previous friends and associations, peer pressure. Peer pressure is what many times can make or break a person. As the Talmud states, if someone walks into the perfume shop and buys nothing, they still walk out smelling better. And so too is the case of an outhouse. You know, they tell a story of Rabbi David Furkas. He was a chassid of the Holy Baal Shem Tov. It happened that one day he was approached by a misnagid, a term used for those who oppose the Hasidic movement. But the misnagid questioned Rav Furkas as to how it was 
that the Hasidim involved themselves with Fabringens, social gatherings, a place where men sit around singing and dancing, pardon me, singing and drinking, sharing stories together. They do all of this, he said, while the children of Israel are in a state of gullus, exile, and the Shekhinah, the divinity of God, is still in pain because it is in gullus with us. But Firk has mentioned this portion of Nusso, which is the beginning in chapter, again, 6, verse number 2, which discusses the laws of Nazar. Rashi, again, commenting on this opening verse, states that a person who views a sota in her state of degradation should separate, separate themselves from wine. Yet further on in the portion, in verse number 11, there Rashi states, quoting Rabbi Eleazar HaKapar, that the Nazar brings a sin offering. Why? Since they afflicted themselves by abstaining from wine. Rafurska said to the Misnagid that these two statements made by Rashi seem to contradict each other. So how are we to understand his contradictory comments? So in Rashi's first comment, in the beginning of the portion, of one who sees a so to her degradation, there he is referring to someone who always sees the worst in people and situations. The glass is always half empty. Now to this individual, the Torah suggests that they abstain from wine, seeing that wine will only increase their feelings of negativity and pessimism in relation to other people and in the world in general. Since this is the way that they normally perceive their lives, wine will only intensify those negative feelings that they normally entertain. Whereas the person who has a positive attitude towards life and other people Someone who perceives the glass as half full rather than half empty. For him, wine only intensifies his feelings of joy and goodness towards his fellow man and towards the world in general. For such an individual, to abstain from wine would truly be a sin. And this is why I said Rabbi Furk is looking directly at the Misnagid. Hasidim Fabrin, to elevate their feelings of love and compassion towards each other and all of their brethren throughout the world, but especially as an expression of love towards their Father in Heaven. And with that thought in mind, let us all sing together and to increase our feelings of joy and brotherly love to everyone that we touch. And with that, let us hope to usher in the coming of Shia Tsukamu quickly and in our time. Hope you found that interesting. Again, something of a nuzzer. By the way, a nuzzer can even be done today. Uh, the problem with that would be is you'd be a nuzzer for life because there would be no way to end it. Um, again, let me thank you for attending. Let me wish you again to be happy, healthy, and safe. And uh, God should bless you with all that is good. Um, again, Shabbat Shalom. There will be a music uh, vi video that will be done after this. There may be a slight pause. And then that uh, new series, again, based on my original songs, again, that we will go to at least about 26, I think 27, whatever. And I hope that you enjoy that as well. Thank you very much for attending. God bless and Shabbat Shalom.